In simple terms, Arduino is a bunch of boards that we can program with a computer so we can connect things like buttons, displays, all kinds of sensors, LEDs, speakers, motors, etc. And make it do whatever we want with it. We see similar microcontrollers in devices like microwaves, toys, thermostats, remote controls, 3D printers, garage door openers, and so on. But of course, with Arduino, we can do our own projects. Like for example, these automatic blinds I built a few years ago. This scale for 3D printers, engine model, YouTube subscriber counter, tachometers, and many other projects. From the variety of Arduino boards available, the one that became the standard is the Arduino Uno and that's one of the reasons many people start with that and the example codes usually are made for that board. The main advantage of the Arduino Uno is that there are many shields that can facilitate adding components. For example, there are shields for relays, for motor controllers, for joysticks, etc. But to start learning, I recommend a shield like this one where it has several common components that will allow you to learn easier because you don't have to connect anything individually. That's a great way to start learning. But later when you get more experience, my opinion is that you should use the Arduino Nano because it's much smaller. It can be easily soldered in a PCB. It fits on a breadboard perfectly for prototyping. And the code is compatible with the standard Arduino Uno. So the code can work with the Arduino Nano without having to modify anything. Other boards can have some differences that might require changing the code a little to make it work. So I don't recommend them for beginners. For all these reasons, I use the Arduino Nano for almost everything. In this tutorial series, I'll show the examples using both options. Using the Arduino Uno with this learning shield and using the Arduino Nano in a breadboard connecting the components individually. Technically, you can use the Arduino Uno with a breadboard, but it gets messy really quick, so I don't recommend it. You can buy them online, either the original one or the clones that are considerably cheaper, but they'll work the same way. Also remember that the breadboard and the jumper wires should be good quality because the worst enemy of electronics is bad connections. I put links in the description for good quality breadboards and jumper wires. The first thing to do is install the Arduino IDE, that is the software where we write the code. It's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. It should automatically install all the drivers and everything you need. Next thing is to connect the Arduino board using the proper USB cable. The best way to start testing everything is with the example called Blink that is always included in the example list. There are many other examples that you may try, but for now let's start with the one called Blink. All this is what we call Sketch, which is basically the file with a code. On the top of the sketch, we usually put text giving some information about the code. It's a good place to put useful links and any relevant information. It's included inside these signs, so it's not going to be executed by the program. We call this a comment, which is exactly that, a comment to help the person reading the sketch to understand the code. We can do it with multiple lines like that, or individual lines by putting two slash symbols before the text. This is very useful because we can write our own comments to make everything clearer. And by putting the double slash, we're telling the software to ignore the text that follows so it doesn't execute it. That text is only for us. The rest is the actual call to run. Then we see the main two sections, the setup and the loop. The setup is included inside these two curly brackets. We can put there everything we want to run only once after powering the board or after resetting the board. Since it only runs once, we can set the pins as inputs or outputs. Input will be anything connected to the Arduino board that will receive information. 
like a button, a sensor, or anything that sends data to the board. An output is anything that Arduino sends to the outside. Like for example, LEDs, displays, speakers, etc. In this example, we want to blink the built-in LED that all these boards have connected in pin 13. So this line is setting that pin as an output, since we later want to send energy from that pin to the built-in LED. We can do this with any pin, but for now let's leave it like that. This indicates the end of the setup section, and now we start the loop section. In the loop we put everything we want to run continuously, meaning that it's going to execute line by line, and when it reaches the end of the loop, it's going to start over executing everything inside the loop indefinitely. In this example, the first thing in this loop is a digital write. That means that it's going to turn that pin on or off. First, mention the pin we want to change that in this case is the built-in LED in pin 13. And then we set the state we want to set it. High is on and low is off. That's why we call it a digital write, because we're writing between two possible states. It's either on or off. Right now we set it to on, and then in the next line it has a delay, which means that it's going to pause for the amount of milliseconds mentioned it. In this case, it is 1000 milliseconds or one second. After waiting one second, it is going to continue executing the code that for this case is another digital write for the same built-in LED, but now we set that pin off. We have another one second delay and then it's going to start over executing everything in the loop from top to bottom, over and over again indefinitely. Let's try to upload this sketch to the Arduino board. First, select the board that you're going to use, that for my case, it's an Arduino Nano. Then select the serial port where it is connected. This port can be different depending on your computer and the USB port that you're using. Often it shows several ports, but you need to select the one used by your board. It's usually indicated with the word USB, but if you're not sure, just select whatever port it shows up when you connect the Arduino board. Now we're ready to upload the sketch. Once it finishes uploading the sketch to the board, the board is going to immediately start running the sketch. As we have it in the code, it's turning the built-in LED on, waits one second, then turns off the LED, waits one second and start all over again. Very simple, right? This is the easiest way to program everything, using examples to guide us and then edit everything the way we want it. I invite you to test with different values for the delays, like wait to two seconds after turning the LED on, and then leave it off only for half a second. Remember that the built-in LED on these boards is pin 13, so if you connect an LED to that pin, you're going to see it doing exactly the same. Another thing we can experiment is by changing the pin. For example, let's change it to pin 12. Just make sure to edit all the lines that mention the pin. In future videos, I'm going to show a better way to do this kind of thing, but for now, let's keep it simple. I uploaded the sketch and now I have to connect the LED in pin 12 using a breadboard. In case you are not familiar with breadboards, they just facilitate connecting components to create your own circuits. These lines represent the internal connections, so for example if we install an Arduino Nano, we can add a jumper wire, the LED, and a resistor in series. Why the resistor? is there to prevent the LED from getting damaged by the 5 volts. You always need some kind of way to limit the current going through LEDs, so you are almost always going to see a resistor in series. There you go. In just a few minutes, we learn about the basics of Arduino. In the next video, we'll talk about inputs and the conditional statements like if this happens, do this. If you ever need to have a custom PCB for your projects, either your own design or from one downloaded from someone else, you can upload the Gerber files to pcbway.com and they can manufacture it starting at $5 plus shipping. 
That makes it easier than using a generic prototype board. I hope it was helpful and see you in the next video. Bye bye.